now coming to the other organism which is a sister that is hymenolepis nana or the dwarf tapeworm now we know that in the case of hymenolepis nana there is no intermediate host rather there is only just a definitive host which is man so uh, how do, how is the life cycle of the hymenolepis nana just remember the life cycle or even if you don't remember this it's all right it is not asked so much the most important questions of the cystodes are the tinea solium and tinea saginata these are the two most important but rest others are very less asked in the exams so just remember if you desire to know it so in case of hymenolepis nana the life cycle is the is that the eggs are ingested with contaminated food and water and we have seen the uh, life uh, i mean we have seen the definitive host and the uh, infective form and the intermediate host and all so here the eggs are ingested by the contaminated food and water these eggs hatch out and release the cysticercoid larva in the body and that larva develops into the adult worm and after that it produces the eggs those eggs passes into the feces and those eggs also hatch out into the lumen and thereby cause the auto infection so this infection continues that's why it does not have any what that's why it does not have any intermediate host because the cycle continues bro okay the cycle continues that's why it does not have any intermediate host the same host is infected again and again by auto infection okay now there is a very important uh, point here to remember the viva examiner sometimes asked you asks you that uh, what are the some of the non bilistent eggs you can name so you have to remember this mnemonic that is neha neha is non bilistent okay neha is non bilistent so n for nectar americanus e for echinococcus granulosus h for hymenolepis nana and a for ankylostoma duodenal so the eggs of these four organisms is non bile stand okay this is all about the hymenolepis nana hylobothrium latum or the fish tapeworm i have told you why the name is fish because the in one of the intermediate host is fish and how can you remember that the intermediate host of this diphylobothrium is fish that can be remembered by uh, knowing that uh, in bengal there is a fish that is called as lote match okay so by that lote match you can remember the latum and by that you can remember that there is a uh, the in, there is a intermediate the second i mean second intermediate host in the life cycle of diphylobothrium latum is a fish okay that's why latum lote okay so life cycle you know you know the host you know the infective form you know the diagnostic form i have described earlier videos now coming to the mode of transmission so mode of transmission is by ingestion of the undercooked fish containing the pleurosarcoid larva that is that is the third stage larva uh, in case of the diphylobothrium latum so uh, when the fish is containing that pleurosarcoid larva and the human ingest that fish then there is transmission of the infection of the diphylobothrium latum now in the human after ingestion the larva is released from the fish and that larva develops into adult worm that development into adult form decreases the absorption of vitamin b12 that causes anemia okay that's why we see anemia in case of the infestation with the diphylobothrium latum you should remember this always that this adult form decreases vitamin b12 absorption that causes anemia now as there is formation of that adult form that will produce uh, eggs we all know that the cestodes are monoecious that means both male and sex or male and female sex organisms are present in the same organism so by self fertilization it will produce eggs and those eggs will be released into the feces now in cyclops what happens that uh, i mean that feces reaches to the water bodies and after reaching the reaching of the eggs in the water that there is formation of the l1 larva in the water itself so coracidium that is l1 larva that is formed in the water and that l1 larva is ingested by the cyclops inside the cyclops the l1 larva gets converted to l2 larva okay now that 
L2 larva is uh, now eaten by the fish okay and in fish it is converted to L3 stage L2 to L3 stage and then when the L3 is eaten undercooked by the man then it enters into the man and thereby this cycle continues okay this whole cycle continues that is the life cycle of the Diphylopotrium latum you should just remember the life cycle because diagnosis and all is not asked from this but even if it is asked then you can write it very easily if you have seen my general parasite uh, general overview of the lab diagnosis of the parasitical parasitological disorder video okay i have made a video on the general overview of the lab diagnosis of the parasitological disorders so if you have seen that video then you can write the answer of any helminthic disease any helminthic disease you can write answer lab diagnosis okay so for that you don't need to be worry worried now coming to the next cyclo uh, cystostose sorry cystode that is echinococcus granulosus or the dog dog tapeworm why dog tapeworm dog tapeworm because one of the uh, because one of uh, i mean the definitive host in case of echinococcus granulosus is a dog that is that's why it is called as a dog tapeworm now you know the host you know the infective form you know the diagnostic form coming to the mode of transmission the mode of transmission of echinococcus granulosus is that man is not man was never a host for the echinococcus granulosus man acquires this infection accidentally okay so man acquires this infection by ingestion of food contaminated with the echinococcus granulosus so man acquires only when uh, he ingest he or she ingest uh, the food which is contaminated with the egg of the echinococcus granulosus now in humans which is the accidental or the intermediate host the eggs those eggs hatch out in the intestine and embryo is released we have seen that the eggs of the cestodes are round in shape and has six uh, you know six hooklets are there in the egg so that embryo is released from the egg and that uh, with the hooklets penetrates into the intestinal wall reaches liver through the portal circulation because from inter we have read in the physiology about the enterohepatic circulation from intestine to the liver so through that enterohepatic circulation through that portal circulation the blood uh, uh, the you know the embryo uh, reaches to the liver and uh, although majority of the embryos get destroyed by the host immune response but few escape and develop into the hydrated cyst which is the larval stage of the parasite of the of this uh, hymenolepis nana okay so uh, there is development of that hydrated cyst now that hydrated cyst is a very important question very 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 commonly asked in the university exams so i will talk about the hydrated cyst in a hydrated cyst in a different video in a separate video okay now the development in the dog so in dog what happens the dogs get infection by ingestion of the viscera of intermediate host containing the hydrated cyst now when the human or when the sips when the sips eat the or uh, uh, you know uh, any uh, other animal when eats the viscera of um, the sips or the any other animals who have eaten the food contaminated with the uh, egg of the echinococcus granulosus generally the host is sheep okay remember generally the host uh, i mean the intermediate host uh, in case of uh, hymenol uh, i mean uh, in, in case of this echinococcus granulosus is a sheep man is an accidental host general host is sheep so sheep eat the uh, food which is contaminated with the echinococcus granulosus and then after eating the viscera of the sheep the dogs acquire the larva okay and then lays the eggs through the feces but when the uh, so here we, we are talking about the sheep not the human because human body is gone for funeral but sheep are thrown away in uh, i mean uh, in the open fields for decomposition so um, if the if any dog eats the viscera of the sheep then it will he uh, i mean the dog will get the uh, larva okay the dog will get the larva hydrated cyst 
and that will convert it in that will get converted into the adult worm that will self fertilize produce eggs and then the eggs will be released in the feces and again the cycle will continue again this feces will contaminate the food of any human or any sheep and thereby it will cause the infection this is not this sheep this is double e sheep okay ss double ep not ship my mistake that's all about the cestodes okay for lab diagnosis you can view my uh, video that is the general overview of the lab diagnosis of the parasitological disorder if you remember that uh, video then you can write the any diagnosis of the any diagnosis of uh, helminthic disorders